climate change. It's here. It's so cold. Wait. Was it global cooling or global warming? Ah, damn. The IB Biology 4.4 curriculum focuses in on global warming and climate change. As of 2017, this is a huge issue, especially in the United States, with our president not accepting the science behind climate change and therefore lifting restrictions in the US that help protect our global environment. So what is climate change? How does it work? And what can we do to help ourselves and teach others about the science behind the issue? All of this and more will be covered in this video. To understand climate change, we first need to understand an important concept that is essential for its explanation. This is the concept of a greenhouse gas. A greenhouse gas is any type of molecule that has the ability to contribute to the greenhouse effect. These molecules have the ability to absorb radiation or heat from the sun and hold it in our atmosphere. Because they are absorbing heat and not allowing it to leave, our earth gets warmer. Greenhouse gases occur in ecosystems in both natural and artificially placed molecules. Carbon dioxide and water vapor are both naturally occurring molecules that cycle within ecosystems. So of course we should find them in the atmosphere and they contribute to global warming. Aside from natural processes, humans have created an unnatural environment that releases increased amounts of carbon dioxide, nitrous oxides, and methane into the atmosphere. These numbers are not normal and are only present due to societies and infrastructures that humans have built. As seen on the last slide, there are many different types of greenhouse gases both naturally occurring and made by humans. The impact of a particular greenhouse gas depends on its concentration and ability to absorb long-wave radiation that is emitted from the Earth's surface. Some molecules, like methane, have a large capacity to absorb long-wave radiation compared to carbon dioxide. but because methane exists in low concentrations and carbon dioxide exists in extremely high concentrations, carbon dioxide has a larger total effect on global warming. This calculation for a molecule is called its global warming potential. Scientists have been collecting temperature data for decades and can actually reference old geological samples of Earth to predict temperature patterns that occurred thousands of years ago. When they match them up with concentrations of greenhouse gases, they find a relationship. Global temperatures and climate patterns are influenced by concentrations of greenhouse gases, meaning higher amounts of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere correlated to higher temperatures. This figure shows how some of those anomalies in temperature actually match up to increased atmospheric carbon dioxide concentrations. As of today, we have a lot of good data that shows greenhouse gases affect global temperatures. One piece of data that is often referenced brings us back to the Industrial Revolution. At the brink of modern civilization, humans found ways to use harnessed energy from Earth that powered factories, cities, and agriculture. Consequently, in doing so, they added more unnatural greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. This graph shows the drastic spike in concentration of these gases during and after the Industrial Revolution. Unfortunately, since the Industrial Revolution, things haven't changed much. Humans are still unnaturally pumping more greenhouse gases into the atmosphere each year, causing global temperatures to increase. These recent additions are largely due to the increased combustion of fossilized organic matter like coal, oil, and natural gas. While it's great that we have power for our modern needs like driving, flying, Instagram, and Snapchat, the continued use of fossil fuels is creating an earth that is warming up at an extremely fast pace, much faster than any natural cycle seen in the past. While global temperatures rise from increased greenhouse gases, there are also increased threats to aquatic ecosystems found all over the globe. Increased atmospheric CO2 poses threats to coral reefs and other shelled organisms through ocean acidification. That's right, increased carbon dioxide in the air 
is actually making our oceans more acidic. In doing so, this chemical imbalance is causing a decrease in calcium carbonate within our oceans. Without calcium carbonate, organisms like coral and snails cannot form hard exoskeletons or shells that aid in their survival. This alters food chains and affects the biodiversity in the ecosystem, meaning other organisms' lives are at risk as well. Still, after all of this scientific data, some people don't accept the science that humans are causing climate change. This greenhouse debate is an ongoing struggle between all people inside and outside of the scientific community. Let's look at a few counter-arguments from people who do not accept the science. Then, let's develop a scientific, data-driven argument to combat them. First. Some people claim that climate change, meaning the earth warming and cooling, is a natural cycle and has happened for over 400,000 years based on data we have recorded from ice cores. For this reason, it is normal and humans have nothing to do with climate change. Take a second and think, what would your counter-argument be? Here's mine. Yes, earth naturally goes through weather cycles, but we have never seen any changes happen as abruptly as we do now and we have data to prove it. Additionally, global temperature positively correlates to the concentration of greenhouse gases. We currently are living in the highest ever recorded history of greenhouse gases. This is unmistakably due to human consumption and the increased combustion of fossil fuels after the Industrial Revolution. Here are two more arguments and counterclaims for you to reference. Make sure you know a few for the IB exam. 